Hi, I'm Ms. Hearn. Let's get started. In this video, we're going to talk about a problem where we're given f of x is x squared minus 2x. In part a, we're asked to find f prime of x. In part b, we're asked to find the slopes of the lines tangent to the graph of f at x equals negative 3, negative 1, and 3. And in part c, we're supposed to graph f and sketch in the tangent lines at x equals negative 3, negative 1, and 3. My focus in this video is going to be on the third part where we're sketching the graph of f, which I'm going to do both on paper and in my math lab. So for part a, we were asked to find f prime of x. This involves finding the limit of the difference quotient. So the limit of the difference quotient, by that I mean this expression here. And generally speaking, we like to break this down into multiple steps. So first I found f of x plus h. f of x plus h means plugging x plus h into the original function, the original function being x squared minus 2x. So when you do that, you're going to get, and when you FOIL it out, you're going to get x squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus 2x minus h. So that was our f of x plus h which we're going to have to put into our limit of our difference quotient here. Next, I subtracted f of x from f of x plus h. So the next part gives me the whole numerator. I take the part I just found in blue, f of x plus h equals x squared plus 2x h plus h squared minus 2x minus 2h and I subtract from it f of x, the original function, which was x squared minus 2x. But when you subtract it, it becomes negative x squared plus 2x. So that, once we simplify that, gives us 2xh plus h squared minus 2h. So that's the numerator of the limit of the difference quotient. Oh, we can't do that. <laughs> um, so we have the rest of it then. Now we need to take the limit and divide by h, which is what's happening in the next step. So we have the limit as h goes to 0 of 2xh plus h squared minus 2h over h. Uh, we need to divide each part by h or think of factoring out the h from the numerator and canceling it. Either way, we're going to be left with 2x plus h minus 2. So the limit as h goes to 0 of 2x plus h minus 2 now can be found by just plugging 0 in for h and we get 2x minus 2. This derivative is a formula for the slope of the tangent line. So in part b, when it asks find the slopes of the tangent lines to the graph of f at x equals negative 3, negative 1, and 3, all they're asking you to do is to plug into this formula that you just found, f prime of x. So here I have found f prime of negative 3 turns out to be negative 8, f prime of negative 1 turns out to be negative 4, and f prime of 3 turns out to be 4 by just plugging into 2x minus 2. Now let's get to part C, the graphing part. Part C, graph f, remember f of x is x squared minus 2x. That's going to be a parabola, right? It's a quadratic function, so it's going to have the shape of a parabola. What else do you remember about graphing parabolas? Perhaps you might remember that we can find the vertex of the parabola by plugging in the x-coordinate of the vertex by plugging into negative b over 2a. In this case, b is negative 2 and a is 1. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that would be the opposite of negative 2 over 2 times 1, which is going to be 2 over 2 or 1. So the x-coordinate of the vertex is 1. The y-coordinate of the vertex we can find by plugging 1 into f. That's going to be 1 squared minus 2 times 1, which is going to give us negative 1. So we have a parabola with a leading coefficient that's positive, so it opens upward, <clears throat> and it goes through the vertex 1, negative 1. So let's copy down here what we know so far. We know that f of x is equal to x squared minus 2x. We know that the vertex is the point 1, negative 1, and that it opens upward. 
So I'm going to start drawing this. Let's go ahead and get some graph paper going here. Okay, so let's plot one negative one, which would be here. Now since this is a parabola that opens upwards, um, we're going to have some x-intercepts. You don't have to find the x-intercepts, you can just... Well actually we know our y-intercept is going to be zero, right? So if we plug in zero we'll get zero. And by symmetry we would get the other x-intercept would have to be right here, which would be at two zero. And that's sufficient to give us the graph of our parabola. Remember, uh, my students, I really think graphing on paper is important. Um, I know we use my math lab for the class and uh, the graphing is different in my math lab. So what I recommend is that you go ahead and graph on paper and then go ahead and put that graph into my math lab or select the multiple choice option after you've drawn out the graph. Graphing on paper is a skill and it takes practice. Okay. So um, now we were also asked to graph tangent lines at negative 3, negative 1, and 3, if I recall correctly. There we go. Graph F and sketch in the tangent lines at negative 3, negative 1, and 3. Those are the points where we found the slopes. So let me go ahead and make sure and put those points on my graph. So for example, if I have the the x value negative 3. Let's switch to blue here. When x is negative 3, what's f of negative 3? What's the y coordinate that goes with it? So plugging into f of x, we're going to have negative 3 squared minus 2 times negative 3, which is going to give us, let's see, 9 plus 6 is 15. So I'm going to need a bigger graph. Okay, so I've started a bigger graph here. I've plotted the points that we knew before. I haven't filled in the line because we've got a couple more points to plot. So let's get back to that in a minute. So this means, let's see, I already found negative 315. How about when x is negative 1? Then f of negative 1 would be negative 1 squared minus 2 times negative 1. It's going to be 1 plus 2, which is 3. So negative 1, 3 needs to go on here. Okay, and another one, another point we were asked about was when x is equal to 3. If x is 3, then f of 3 will be 3 squared minus 2 times 3. It's going to be 9 minus 6, which is 3 which makes sense because it's, again, due to the symmetry of the graph. Let's see, if we go over to three, we would be at three. Okay, so now I'm gonna draw this in. And now what we were asked to do in addition to graphing the parabola, the function f, we were asked to graph tangent lines to the curves at these various points. So we're going to need a tangent line at negative 315, a tangent line at negative 1, 3, and a tangent line at 3, 3. And we know the slopes of the tangent lines, so we can use those to graph the tangent line. So for example, let's see, we found the slope of the tangent line. At x equals negative 3 was negative 8. So that means that if you think of it as rise over run, we're going to go down 8 to the right 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 to the right 1. So our tangent line needs to go through those two points. Now this is... Okay, so there's your first tangent line to the graph at negative 3. Um, let's find the slope through negative 1. I'm going to use a different color though. Let's use green. Okay, so here we have the slope m when x is negative 1. So let's go down here. Negative 1, the slope m, I'm sorry, was negative 4. So if we're starting here at negative 1, 3, 
and we have a slope of negative 4, we're going to go down 1, 2, 3, 4, and over 1. Alright, so our tangent line should go through those two points. So there's the tangent line through um, negative 1, 3. And now let's look at 3, 3. Let's use blue. So the slope m when x was equal to 3 is 4. So let's use that. So coming over to 3, 3, the slope is 4. We go up 4 and to the right one. 1, 2, 3, 4 to the right one. Okay, so here is our uh, tangent line that had a slope of 4 at x equals 3, or through x equals 3. All right, so um, the other thing that I wanted to do in this video is to graph this in my math lab. All right, so let's switch to my math lab now. Okay, I'm gonna enter the solutions to A and B. And now I'm going to click to enlarge the graph. Okay, so we're going to graph the R parabola. Remember, this is our parabola. Uh, it goes through, it has a vertex at 1, negative 1. I'm going to grab my uh, parabola tool and plot the vertex at 1, negative 1. Any other point, in this case I pick 0, 0. Okay, and now I'm going to add to this graph some tangent lines. So remember, um, the first tangent line we graphed through negative 3, 15 had a slope of negative 8. So I'm going to grab a line here. I'm going to plot negative 3, 15. And then I'm going to go down 8 and over 1. So down to 7 over 1, negative 2, 7. Grab another line. Let's see, we want one that goes through negative 1, 3 and has a slope of negative 4. So I'm going to go to negative 1, 3, plot that point. Then I'm going to go down 1, 2, 3, 4, and to the right one. Okay, that's my second tangent line. Now I'm going to grab another line. And we want to graph it through 3, 3 with a slope of 4. So I'm going to go to 3, 3, plot that point. And then I'm going to go up 1, 2, 3, 4 to the right one and plot that line. Okay, so now I'm going to save it and check my answer. And it worked. Okay, so I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please give it a like. That will help other students to find the video.